Next up, our friends from No. Let's welcome No. Afternoon. We are one of the later stage startups. I want to tell you a little bit about No. I want to go a little bit beyond what you're going to see at our website, talk about what we think we're doing in education, and give you a quick demo. So when you come first, we're focused in post-secondary. That's our initial market entry. Most of the folks here have started in early learning. Um, we can talk about why. Um, when you come to our website, what you'll see is what appears to be an e-textbook company. But in fact, what No is, is a digital content company. And we'll talk about that in our thesis for a moment. Um, one of the questions posed very early on at the beginning of this uh, entire session was, will textbooks exist in five years? Everyone can have their vote, a lot of prognosticators, but the reality will be that there will be a mix of textbooks to new forms, but all of them are content. And that's where Noah's focused, on content. We are basically a platform. We fit between the content providers and the content consumers, the students, the educators. And our job is to help in a very consistent way and a scalable way to make them interactive, social, and measurable. So um, our core thesis, uh, for education to scale, K-12 post-secondary, um, we have to flip the model. There is no doubt about it in both macro um, and microeconomics. We have to make it such that students have more responsibility for the consumption of the content and the teacher is freed up at much greater scale to support. We saw that today in a number of products. Um, to do that, the content really has to be different. Today, as an analog, what we're doing to my kid is like giving him a newspaper and saying, look at the news. He has no clue. He is an interactive participant. And that is where kids' heads are at, and so the content has to be there for him. Um, we sit between the publishing community today, who's the largest content provider. In post-secondary, 230,000 books, individual unique ISBNs used last year, and the students. And the question is for all those publishers, and we have relationships with the top 60 publishers in the industry in the US alone, how are they going to move into this digital transformation? It is a problem of incredible scale for them because they've been producing books through desktop publishing tools. So I'm going to introduce you to No, and I'm doing this from the perspective of the client, the, the application that the student would see. There's an incredibly sophisticated cloud infrastructure that supports everything from the ingestion of content to the delivery to the measurement that sits behind all of our mobile clients. When the student comes in, they see what we call the course manager. This is a place they store all their materials. Uh, the books that they've bought over four years, uh, they can even come to Dropbox and grab content from professors who are using Dropbox at a rate of 50% over Blackboard, even though they have Blackboard availability. Um, they can pull in content from Google Scholar, whatever the sources of information, they can bring them in, they can organize them uh, by course, by term. So let's go into a book. I'm going into Campbell's Biology. This is the number one biology textbook sold in the US. Uh, as I'm coming in, I see all of the chapters. I can move uh, from the chapters to the pages, go directly into the book. Now, I won't demo all this stuff, but we have all the basic stuff you'd imagine. You can highlight. You can highlight in multiple colors. You can add notes to highlights or pages. You can search the book. You can search the internet. You can search Wikipedia. You can look up words in dictionaries. You can bookmark on and on. I can go through all those. That's core. Everyone should be able to do that who's dealing with content. What we've done, though, is we've tried to create layers of new interactivity. So I'll give you one quick example. Every one of these textbooks comes with a glossary. Um, and you have to go to the back of the glossary, whether it's physical or digital. We used our technology to scrape them out of the back of the book, deep link them back into, the, into uh, the content. And so now, when I touch on any word that is associated with a glossary, there it is. Cost for publisher, zero. In that process, we built flashcards for every chapter automatically. Again, cost for publisher, zero. Immediately, you have a study aid for students that's recording results for them or potentially for the institution. If you remember when you were in school, there were CD-ROMs stuck in the back of the textbooks that nobody ever put in a CD-ROM drive. The publishers have now moved them all to web directories that nobody goes to. 
The point is, this stuff is hard to get to. So we view the book as a point of curation. I'll show you the first derivative of curation. Take the publisher's content and let them bring it directly into the book. So now that little thing that pointed to the CD-ROM of the web directory gives me the content that the publisher has spent a lot of money producing. This is some incredible content, actually. And students actually go to the, you know, Google and they search for this stuff because it's easier than going to the book. Evaporation of water. The type of content that we can bring in literally can be anything. 3D models, we have beating hearts. In essence, this new form of content is allowing the publishing community and eventually the teacher and student to put in digital laboratories so that instead of reading about photosynthesis, you can do photosynthesis. We use our technology, again, to try to find new opportunities for study aids. Here's an image produced by the publisher. If you notice the quiz me, there's a set of callouts. When I type quiz me, we redact those callouts, and you can literally go through and answer the questions. I'm just going to grab these randomly, and we'll see how I do. Pretty poor. Again, study aid for student, zero cost for the um, uh, publishing community, and a much more engaged um, experience. Last thing I'm going to show you before going on to some quick lessons, the act of using this content, of highlighting, of taking notes, isn't just about highlighting and taking notes. And most people have used that only uh, as an opportunity to show navigation. Where are my highlights? So what we did is we produced a side product. It's called your journal. Basically, it is extracting all of your highlights, all of your notes, all of your bookmarks, and providing a companion document for studying. And then as a student, you can then take that stuff you're pulling out and do more with it. So as an example, if the teacher is writing something on the board, I can write something on the board. Or if they've written some incredible stuff that you want to capture, So now you've created a companion document. So real quick, what have we learned so far from our students? Well, um, in a number of uh, analysis that we've done with our students, we found that they're saving between 60 and 90 minutes per course per week. And for students, efficiency is the number one issue. Um, and the reason is, first, we've done a really great job with search, made it very sophisticated with a lot more being added. So navigation, search, everything to find your material has been critical to them. Second thing is the journal. They have everything they need. They're pulling it together in a compact place to study. Write a paper, whatever it is. Do this on literature or STEM. It doesn't matter. And the third, which we can take no credit for, is portability. The average student um, has about a 15-pound backpack. They think they have a 22-pound backpack. Uh, they can't carry everything with them, and with this kind of product, they can find 15 minutes to study here, 10 minutes to study there, and they're really cornering their time market very effectively. Let me talk about two lessons, and these are so basic and obvious that it's almost embarrassing to talk about them. <laughs> but as a guy who's been doing startups for a lot of years, it's stuff for everyone to remember. Number one, user experience. Everything about our company is about the student and the teacher, not the publisher. We have to serve them. But we, every decision, we do ethnography, we do primary research, we do uh, you know, behavioral analytics. We do everything to figure out what they're doing. And I can tell you and show you reading patterns. We have it by grade. We look at how they behave. It's really critical to know your audience and to focus on the user experience. We get our highest marks because of the user experience of the application. Second thing, for those in this market in particular, evolution, not revolution. Of course, we had great ideas of what the new textbook would be. We have a vision ourselves. Okay? 
but this is a market that has an autoimmune system that is attenuated like no bodily system I've ever dealt with. There are more little bits that can kick big important ideas out, even with the radical you know, and positive change we've seen in the last two years. So we've taken a very conscious strategy of not throwing away those 230,000 books. To show them in the form that the professor understands, to layer and add interactivity, and to help this community evolve, because it's really good at evolving, but when it sees radical change, it tends to freeze up. Okay. So obviously a bigger established company, but thoughts? Yep. Yeah, I'm really excited by this. I've spent a lot of time with you and Inkling, which is a competitor, um, and I have an 18-year-old kid going to college this fall, so uh, I'm very interested. He has an iPad, so he's ready to buy your products. How does he know uh, uh, of, of his uh, courseware, how, how much is available to him from you or Inkling or one of these new digital publishers? Well, and one of the reasons we focus on the scale issue is because of the number of books there are. Um, I think Inkling has 110 books. Maybe it's 150. I don't know the exact number. We have over 200,000. So the probability of finding content is pretty high, although the publishing community is lagging in, in uh, uh, rights clearance. So there are definitely 2007 and before ti or, uh, titles that aren't available digitally. But every year, it's getting better. And right now, the publishers, everything is being cleared, everything. So within a year and a half or two years, I think this will, this will be uh, uh, clear for everyone. So you're an established company. How long have you been working on this aspect? After three years. Shift, three years. So what's your, how are you doing? What's We're your doing great. Base? No, no, well, numbers. Please. We don't give numbers. I'll give you a couple of metrics. In our last two uh, go-to-markets, the rush season, which is about a you know, four-week window, um, in the Apple Store, and that's one of our markets, people come to our website and come to other apps, uh, we were the number one education application uh, through the entire rush period, and we were the number two revenue application across the entire um, I, uh, I marketplace, all categories. Only uh, Apple's pages beat us during those time periods. So but, significant uh, uptake. I've got two questions. How did you get 200,000 books done? And secondly, what about cheap tablets? How, how can this run on those? So um, we have spent a tremendous amount of time on what we call our ingestion process. That does every, We'll take EPUB, we'll take PDF, web ready, print ready. Uh, it's a very sophisticated technology process. And in 12 minutes, we can turn what was the publisher's content into no content. Um, it's, and that's one of the reasons the publishers love us, is we can bring them online immediately, where other people may take 10, 12 weeks to turn one book at high cost. Um, the second part of your question was uh, platform. So iPad, Android, basically will be on every mobile platform that a student has, because we cannot be uh, missing, right? We can't make decisions about where the students are going to have a platform. Is there any difference between the, the tablets? Do, no. do you treat iPad users better? Or? Um, I'm just asking. Yeah, for that extra 30%, we, no. Uh, there are some differences. Example, um, uh, what you'll see coming out um, in Metro uh, is an incredible pen experience that doesn't exist in the iPad environment. And we think pen is organic to the educational process. And uh, so I think that's one of the differences that we're taking advantage of there and in Android that you wouldn't see in, uh, uh, in the iPad environment. You is know, when the, I, um, oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, is the 30% that Apple takes, um, does it make the economics prohibitive, or is it troublesome? Because it's a, it's a big number, obviously. It is a big number. And is it similar to what a bookstore would make? Is that a similar margin, or is it much greater? Much greater. So, so how does Apple respond to that, and how do you respond to that? You know, can you just sell the yep. No app and then let people buy from your website and it shows up there? Yep. They can buy at our website. They get certain benefits that we can't actually give them through the Apple Store. We're not allowed to return books when they buy on iTunes. When they buy from us, they can return the book. So the basic question, or the basic answer is, for us, and for many of you, you should view Apple as a marketing cost, not as a distribution cost. For us, it's about establishing ourselves. There's a lot of attenuation and visibility. And at some point, you get big enough, and you don't, like Amazon and others, you don't need to have your books in their store. And I think at, at, at that I, point in time, I, Apple is going to make some changes in their, in their economic model. 
I know you said this uh, industry is hard to change, but when I interviewed uh, Andrew Newman, who's a surgeon over at Stanford, he said everything he learned in college 30 years ago is completely obsolete. And he uses Hippocrates to keep up to date on his industry. How fast can I, uh, as an author, shove new information through this system and, and get it in the hands of students? Is, is that possible? Or, so, or is it a year by year thing? You saw, the, you saw the smart links, yeah. you know, the stuff that we layered on. It's a real time technology. We have a set of tools that are given to the publishing community. And so literally, if you have an accounting book and a gap principle changes, mm -hmm. they can find new material. They can smart link it into the book, push the publish button out to all of the students, teachers within minutes. And so that entire layer, whether it's from the publisher on out or from the teacher to their students, creates a real-time curation of the underlying content. Two questions. One, is there any exclusives with textbooks? Like, are publishers exclusive with you, or is it sort of an open platform where they will give their ebook to any number of players and then two, the iBook uh, publisher just came out for free. Anybody can publish. How does that impact your business, at, if at all? It seems like your product, we've been using some iBook yep. stuff at Mahalo. It seems like your product's pretty far advanced from the iBook 1.0 reader, but I mean, Apple's obviously super committed to this, so how much of a competitor is iBooks? So um, what was the first question? Um, it was around... Oh, exclusivity. Exclusivity. We haven't announced anything, so at this point in time, no. Um, iBook. Um, we don't know a major rock band that is using uh, Apple products to produce a record. We don't know a major web developer that is using iWeb. Um, Apple produces phenomenal single consumer products. Publishing content in scale is more than just producing a book. And there's a lot in that process. Uh, and we don't see that product necessarily scaling to the needs of you know, commercial content. And in the end, there's going to be a lot of commercial content, whether it looks like a book or it looks like a 2D simulation. It's probably not going to be through iBook. Anything else? Let's hear it for no. Very good. Awesome. Well done.